finding much more I'm finding it much more effective and entertaining to just answer with these videos. Okay, the concept basically is the concept of, let me think about this. Okay, the, um, the blame argument discussion about um, owing indigenous people land um, and uh, egregious, egregious egregious behavior committed against the natives starting back in the 80s when they started saying that Columbus Day shouldn't be celebrated and more and more since then um, human, humanitarian organizations have picked it up and um, this has been going on since the 60s and 50s with creating reservations or before even uh, for the Indians and, and the Hawaiians have uh, also inspired by our own logic because basically, you know what's interesting is that in a lot of places um, the natives were just kind of, oh well, you know we really didn't try we kind of trusted them first and we kind of wanted to let it happen and now we're in this situation well we might as well Swim, you know. We might as well. Now we're we're on the dance floor. We might as well. Um, but it was actually the the white uh, European English culture that started getting into this. And where exactly it starts is kind of interesting because it seems to have to do with a sense of we are capable of self criticizing. We are capable of saying we did wrong to blacks. Uh, we are. It's 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 also uh, it's also like um, um, a, a holier than thou kind of self and self boasting in a sense. It's like saying we are so good and so superior that we can admit that we wronged these people, and so we give ourselves authority to um, to state that we um, did these things it's, it's, it's a really interesting subject it's kind of uh, complex too because it goes back to all the stuff that Europeans, the Dutch the, the, the French, the English did in Africa and all the massacres and the famines and everything that happened so there is this need for Europeans to to say uh, it's true we did this and it comes from Christianity it comes from Judaism from Christianity um, this uh, mea culpa you know we need to admit this we need to recognize this so it actually in the case of Hawaii um, the Hawaiians were kind of like well you know it happened and then it seems that we inspired them to think logically about this and they came up and started saying, hey, yeah, that's right, you did take our land, you know, and that annexation, you know, we kind of like gave them, we fueled them on, and then they went, and, and um, who's they in any case, you know, because the Hawaiians are no longer the Hawaiians that were usurped by, by the English, um, and then uh, flooded by immigrations, and, and they all died from, from disease, and then they were um, invaded by other, not invaded, I mean immigrated by people from Tonga and Guam and Korea and China and Japan, the Portuguese, the Puerto Ricans, the Mexicans, everybody went to work in Hawaii, especially the Chinese, the Filipino, the Portuguese, um, the Japanese. Uh, and these are the people, they're sort of, sort of shade, caramel shade you know caramel shaded people do you see the Asian traits um, 
a lot of them are very Pacific Islander, but how much of that blood, if you could go and look into that blood and see who, who um, how many of those are actually the people that are direct descendants from the people that were survived the English uh, first uh, invasion of the islands? Uh, invasion, well, you know, invasion, sort of social invasion of the islands. Um, and those would be the people that say that would have a, a case to uh, be angry at the Europeans, but really. This, the, the reality of the situation is that the mix of immigrants that later became the local population are the ones that want to take that argument and hit the Europeans over the head with it. And they actually kind of like it. They like it because it empowers them. It empowers them with something they can be right about. And so they can get angry at you and we have to be all oh, big uh, in, 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 in spirit and admit it and, uh, and we bow down and we say we're just visitors on your land you know and you're right you know America usurped annexed uh, uh, Hawaii and blah 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 and everybody's happy because they can complain and be angry and always have the last word and you have to bow down and shut up and, and it, there's a stability of uh, of, um, of social uh, prejudice going on in Hawaii right now, uh, segregation and a kind of social oppression of the of the outsiders again under the, the these type this this category of locals because it's a it's really a mix of people that came after the fact but in any case um, you know they're mainly people that yes were born on the islands but when were they born on the islands that's the whole thing. Um, they were born, most of them were born on the islands when it was already part of America. So during that time, they were babies when they were born in the United States. And did they, during the, their childhood, um, have any problems with America? Where, where, did, where does it come from? Were they not given education, health care? They, did they not make something out of their lives? Where does this anger come from? But not from an excuse handed down saying, hey, guess what, we have an argument and you can be right about it and you can vent your anger against Europeans. And so all of a sudden, they're, even though they have no reason to be mad at, at the country they were born in, uh, they, they can pick up this argument and beat up white people. So the whole absurdity. And this is just one situation. Then uh, the English talk about the natives that were um, in, in, the, in Patagonia, you know, the, uh, the new arrivals, the Europeans were b making their forts basically, just like in the States. They didn't, the Europeans didn't arrive and say, say, look, natives, kill them before they open their mouth. No, there were different cases. Um, in fact, there was a lot of friendship, a lot of exchange. And then there were those that got angry that didn't like what the Europeans were kind of taking over or whatever. Um, it's all very confusing. And, but the most important element is, that, is, is this. Where does one draw the line? Because the Mapuche that were in South America at some point probably ran off the land somebody else. And the Indians that were wherever in North America and the Aztecs in Mexico ran off um, uh, cultures that were related to the Mayas or you know there's always somebody that gets pushed over so it's interesting to watch the English try in these Facebook uh, Marbinas Falklands group to they try to uh, equate what happened in uh, South America with which is kind of stupidly ironic because what they're saying is okay we admit that we pushed you over and, and you know uh, we forcefully kicked you off the islands after all didn't you do it too okay let's say that we did and, and I'm laughing because there's an argument to say that supports why in the case of the Falklands there is legality there's something that can uh, be argued and in the case of South America it's sort of ridiculous because at some point Put it this way, when before all of this 
movement that I was just talking about started in the 50s or 60s and the American English culture started creating this uh, thing about you know being fair to the natives and uh, um, if you were Argentinian before and were living in Argentina before this cultural character uh, this cultural buzz of talking about uh, the native indigenous population um, you would have known in Argentina that did not have these things that almost sound like Spanish trying to imitate how we are culturally in America like I saw on YouTube um, something about Afro-Argentinians and I'm like laughing because I'm thinking where that's they copied that from California that's, they don't, we never had Afro-Argentinians. That's cultural exportation. And I'm not inventing that as a subject matter, by the way. We're invading other countries with, with our cultural ideas, and we're not letting them be themselves because they feel they have to be better and they have to be more like America and England to be better, more like Europeans or whatever they're doing there, and that way they can be better. So we start sounding the same way, and look, hey, we're catching up. Right, <laughs> cultural exportation is devastating. It it robs us from our own sense of loving ourselves, making our own, being genuine. Um, in any case, if you lived in Argentina, you um, would have known that the indigenous. We studied what happened, and and and, and we actually said is taught our kids we still probably do I don't know for a fact but what I do know for a fact is what I studied in elementary school is that we were horrible with these people we 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 cut their ears and we kicked them out of their land and mommies and babies crying and I mean we didn't hide this stuff and it was already part of our culture and it was forgiven we they had absorbed over we were absorbed in the culture the Mapuche and the Indians, so this horrible thing happened, we would look at each other, we know it happened, we both studied, but now we're all Argentinians. We had forgiven each other. But this exportation of, of foreign culture has said, wait, wait, that wound needs to be reopened. We have to have it, we have to have that wound happen again so that now we can make you guys fight. Some people say that. Some people say it's a it's a deliberate exportation of culture to sep to create separation in countries. And you know what? You can really expand on that and it sure seems like it. Because it sure seems like there are uh, it, organizations in Bristol or wherever that they, they have this. Now one has to forgive people that are young and they think they're doing something good. And what they don't realize is that they're rehashing something that we were almost already good at healing. Uh, in America, it's like um, racism keeps resurfacing because people, instead of truly healing it, I always make the example of Brazil because to me, Brazil is very exemplary in how they're mixed so well. Now they want to say that Brazil is racist. And after 50 years of observing South America and North America, you say, the world is crazy. We're like about to do something cool in Brazil. Nobody you know they were so mixed why are we now trying to create racism in america we say we want to heal prejudice but we have little boxes that we check we categorize and we say check if you're from cambodia if you're black and so the person or if you're white or if you're hispanic and latino so the person that wants to um you know does not have this in their mind in other words you know, like the Argentinian that got to America or, or, or wherever when in the in the eighties, uh, was kind of thought it was cool. You know, the the blacks and the, the, their way of dancing and their way of talking and walking, and this uh, inclusive um, grace, this inclusive um, innocence, did not ha was not. Uh, possessing of racism but then they stayed in America and they had to start filling out these forms and they see these commercials and say don't call people black 
don't you know don't separate people by colors and they go what who's separating anybody by colors said the Argentinian what, what are you talking about didn't think much of it five years down the line again you know oh well you know you look like you're Latino we need to hire one Latino in our company so that we fulfill a quota and the Argentinian goes oh well I'm not really my my family's all Germans and I got a Belgian grandfather and my other grandmother's Italian but you say I look Latino because I speak Spanish sure you know and he walks away um, and then his kid and then his friend and pretty soon he catches himself in a conversation saying you know those black guys who did this who robbed the car it was those black guys that broke into my car and he sees himself he became what first surprised him when he came to the country and this is what I'm sorry to say it but this is what English culture is doing to places because we're so obsessed with categorizing and making sure that we behave and do and think logically according to this structure of thinking and we we have these categories and you are this and you're not a, a gay or you're anti-gay and and what do you do to people how do you separate people I'm not a people separator you know and it's it's like mad it's absolutely mad instead of thinking as all one human being end of story <laughs> just talking about people as how people are you know characteristics personality characteristics end of story why this whole thing of looking for groups and creating it are you a racist are you an anti-jew are you a holocaust denier are you, you know you're driving the world crazy i'm sorry but this has been my experience on facebook that it seems that the english culture of the world will not let us forget about racism will not let us uh, integrate our countries into whole cultures whole societies we always have always have to look for a problem don't we okay so stop it I'm sorry I know this sounds pretty racist pretty horrible it's actually a human observation on my experience upon my, about my experience on Facebook and what I see clearly are people who speak English and it seems that the people who speak English are doing this and the people that speak Spanish don't do this I'm sorry call me a racist but I don't know what other uh, way to uh, specify what seems over what seems pretty specified it seems pretty specified it could be more of America's leadership in this you know that we, we obsessed with with uh, with uh, the gay thing and you gay or not gay gay or not gay tell me gay or not gay you be gay or don't be gay marry the count my god you know can you we just let people be one can we let people be one and stop trying to uh, put labels and categories and, and tell people to do or to not call or separate or make groups or not make groups it's just a way of thinking that needs to be stopped and it goes directly at um, at the argument of of the Mapuche existing and being a problem in Argentina and because they get that you know they they hey you know if if we start saying that say these kids in, in Patagonia who descend from tribes from native tribes if we start saying this guess what we get some money given to us from from England English uh, uh, um, hum humanitarian company international whatever human rights organizations and we'll get some funding and then people are all passionate about it and we find people that seem like-minded and they'll just say yes to our cause you know and hey you know we're so bored here and you know we could be somebody we could be somebody that we could be those we can be leaders we can stop being neutralized um, numbers that earn money in this big capitalistic machine and we can be men who do something in in society and so they're tempted and um, of course the people that can empower them don't see this as a, a sad a lamentable um, uh, request for for identity they see it as an opportunity to uh, place their purposes their their fundings and and creating separation in the world everybody's madly wanting to be something do something be important and 
And what is most important is we maintain countries integral and that we support countries' integrity. That's really the starting base, that we maintain countries in their integrity, that they learn to not feel less about themselves and feel that they have to borrow money and, and, and incorporate themselves into something that's already pulling forward ahead of them, but that they think instead that they have to create and generate their own sciences, study, uh, developments, research, and create themselves. You know, that's the most important thing, and that we don't attack and create separations in, 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 in other people's countries. And um, so, to this argument, what I wanted to say, actually, it's already 20 minutes, I was okay, is that uh, there is a way of leveling the the playing field there's a way of just finally um, having s a place to start talking logic better laws ways of interpreting laws ways to amend past mistakes and ways to aim for the future with uh, identifiable identifiable people, not abstract, you know, I'll put a feather on my head and I'm a pooch all of a sudden, but actually people who exist because their parents were born in the same country that I was born in, and we both call ourselves that country's name. And, um, and the starting point that we have is the United Nations as an event in the world, the starting plane that everybody can work with as countries, as people, who are still saying we want our own country, we, we've been colonized, we, nah, nah, nah. They, we have a, a reference, and if they existed, if, uh, yes, there would be people that are left out of it, be, but that works, that makes sense, because the United Nations provides the first place where we're structured institutionally, uh, in, in infrastructures, uh, international, everything, uh, relationships that exist under an identity and they can be uh, witnessed and uh, be an integral part of a forum amongst equal nations. And if there are debts from the past, you can say, okay, we, you know, in other words, this, I'm just gonna make, I'm just gonna cut to the point because I uh, cut to the chase because I can't really see a clear what at other times seems more clear in my head. But the Falkland Malvinas um, dispute does enter on something that is resolvable, even though it happened 188 years ago. It is resolvable because both countries are part of the United Nations. Both countries existed uh, 200 years ago, before even the conflict started, the people arrived within an area, a sphere that all of which is uh, represented in the United Nations. Whereas the indigenous tribes of North America or the Mapuche or other uh, countries that stopped to exist completely maybe 100 years ago, and the people that were there are dispersed in Russia and parts of Eastern Europe and, and Finland and some are in Israel, whatever, um, are saying, you know, we had a country too, but it wasn't, um, it's no longer registered, uh, it's not, no longer part of the United Nations, and so we can make a cutting line and a starting line, a starting plane. We can say, okay, you know, let's, let's just take the people that form the nations that are represented in the United Nations and resolve all our problems because they're all currently represented on the, in the United Nations. We can resolve things that, have, that are ho happening now and that are dragging from behind because the people are represented today in the United Nations. And from here on forward, we can start, we can continue uh, working things out as a world. So that basically answers the, the question. It's not a question. This 
ends, okay, this quashes the little uh, instigating argument that the British want to have on in these British members of the, these Facebook Facebook groups that want to equate uh, and want to say that we, the Spanish, uh, robbed the lands from the Indians that were in South America. You know, if you want to take that world um, occurrence, you can't isolate Argentina. Basically, you can talk about every country in the world from England to Russia to the displaced, more advanced societies, displaced previously occupying people. And so it never ends. There is no uh, starting line. There's no starting point there. It's a null argument. I know they just do it to, to try to not have a conversation. They just want to destroy the the the, the uh, the flow, the, the, communica the communicative uh, ability of the groups. They don't want to talk about the, about the dispute. They don't, they don't want to have to face what happened in 1833. They don't, so they, they throw monkey wrenches in. Uh, you know, we're all aware of that, and we all basically Argentinians end up leaving the groups, which is what they want, um, because they're just laughing. They're mocking at how, how little they respect uh, a, a, a dialogue on this but I don't um, get discouraged and I do take it seriously because I know that a lot of these people are being miseducated because of other people's mocking and banality they're believing certain things and it's important that we educate ourselves in truth and things that are logically correct not in uh, superficial mocking spite. It's important that people learn and grow on things that really uh, operate, run the world. Um, and so it does, there is no argument. There is no thing about, you know, you can't say uh, anything towards uh, what the Spanish did to the because there is no nation that can be brought back. This is the whole point. The United Nations is the starting plane of anything that could possibly be repaired or move forward in, in bettering or um, bringing equality and human rights to all peoples of the world. Um, if you start saying things like, let's uh, return Hawaii to the Hawaiians or uh, land to the Mapuche, in all fairness, America or the Argentinians could say, well, wow, really? You're obligating? The United Nations comes out with its blue helmets and they are obligating? Okay, well then, I suppose uh, they didn't have anything when, when Europeans got there. I suppose if they're going to just, they didn't exactly have all that land. They were kind of, they spread inside valleys like like a root system and they had little centers here and there and but they want to have all these provinces all of a sudden it's so ridiculous it's so ridiculous i cannot believe this is why you you know that they're mocking facebook these people are just totally laughing at, and it's really a shame because you have an instrument where instead of uh, instead of having to obey what what politicians do their best or do their worst at, at, at end up driving you know people to do you know that the greater intelligence is found among millions not among a few hundred or a few thousand so feasibly facebook or other social networks are are a, a vehicle through which uh, the highest uh, extracted uh, solutions could be could be produced and uh, res best resolving most generously most complete um, solutions to all of the world's problems could be produced by hundreds of people taking it seriously talking together and sharing what they know and accessing better information and knowledge from other places and bringing it to the group and 
it's amazing what could be uh, getting done in Facebook and, place and other social networks. And these people just see it as, you know, a, a way to um, kill time or, or, or boost their egos by making fun of people, you know. It's really a shame. But, um, so there is no, um, there is no equatable, there is no comparison uh, with uh, what happened in the, the Mapuches and the, all the, the Guaranis. They're already Argentinians and you're all wasting your time. Whereas the Falklands dispute between Argentina and Britain exists since before the islanders arrived in their 99% majority. There are apparently, somebody says, I have descendants from Bernays time. Yeah, if we actually take the percentage of, of whatever gaucho was still roaming around when the English kicked off the Argentinians and he stayed on the islands and we see where that blood is today, it might be a little smidgen, uh, a little one or five percent or ten percent in like four people I, that hardly describes the uh, the ethnical composition of the of um, of today's islanders today's islanders came to the islands after the argentinians were removed by the british and part of the reason they were brought to the island is so that they would england could have it uh, you know, they could do their work for it so that England didn't have to worry that the Argentinians in another 10 years were going to come and settle these barren islands once again because they were right there and because they had history and because they felt right about it and because nature, nature basically intuitively says it's cold, nobody's living there, nobody wants to live there, they're right in front of our country. So as there was such a natural pull for Argentinians to keep coming back, the English saw this and said, well, we better put, you know, a group of people there, a government found, found another city, we want to put our own city on the one bay over so we can give it a different name and that way. So the reason the islanders were brought to the islands, yes, they, this is not written, this is not official. But Jesus Christ, wake up already. How much of government's real motivating reasons behind closed doors, the stuff they talk about for the, in the conversations between leaders and government officials, make him come up with the better decision, actually makes it to what you hear, what they tell the people is the reason that they're doing that for. Jesus Christ. You know, th that's why people can understand things better than what they tell you, thank God. We, we can have common sense. We know how people are. We know how human beings are. We know what we do. We know we can lie. We know we're tempted to lie. We know we prefer not to, and we try to make a world where we don't lie. And everybody knows what it's like to be a human being. And you cannot put two and two together and, and not know that people in government who make official statements are also human beings and then when they make decisions they actually say well you know if we actually have a war with the junta um, the islanders will da 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 about us and then the argentinians da 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 and then we'll have a peace agreement because we're going to beat the argentinians in about three four or five months max uh, we don't believe uh, Peru is going. Peru might help. Brazil is not going to jump in. All these things get talked about, and a war is decided to be had. Of course, this is not what you hear on the evening news. Now, are you saying that I am crazy because I'm telling you what you already know, or are you mocking me because you're pretending that you already didn't know that? Is what I want to know. <laughs>